Never have I ever cheated on my boyfriend. Like a, a long time ago, like an old, like not my fiance, like a- No, no, a long oh. time ago. No, AJ. <gasps> it's okay, he was cheating on me the whole time. So, right. I found out. I don't know what this is, <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to Spill the Chai. I'm Aliyah Jasmine here in Los Angeles. We've got Sangeeta Patel over there in Toronto. And today Toronto. we're spilling the tea on Mindy Kaling's new series, Never Have I Ever. I'm really excited about this. It's about a 15 year old girl who wants to live life, do things that her parents won't let her do. We can pretty much relate to this character. On yeah. so many different levels. On so many levels. And what I love about what Mindy's done with this is, A, I love that Mindy's behind it. I mean, I absolutely I love, love it, too. It's, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I love that. But I think also Netflix came to her is the rumor, right? It's what I've read. Um, and she they actually wanted her to do a series about her own life when she was 15. And she was like, I don't want to have this thing, like, based in the 80s. I want to yeah. do one about what it's like now. And I love, I do love that she's doing it more now. Like but wouldn't it be so fun to see what she was like in the 80s? I mean, we can True. all relate to what she went through, right? So it would have been interesting to see her life. Uh, I can't really just want the soundtrack. Down. You just want to have those like old, like, Ava songs <laughs> there, right? <laughs> Driving in the station wagon with my dad, you know, <laughs> no seatbelt, and life was great. There's for sure going to be to the kids now. Mindy's going to be in it though. Like, you're, I think you're going to see things that we relate to through Mindy, like, in like, she's for sure going to pull from her life experience and put it in here. For sure. Yeah, I think it'll be great. I, I think I think I need that to be part of the show because kids now have every opportunity. Their parents let them do whatever they want and teach themselves how to make life happen for them. When we were kids, our dad and mom would tell us what to wear, where to go, what to do, what time to go sleep. No, we all had of that, no so. independence. Like that no. independence was not was something you earned. You were never no kidding. curfew was at eight thirty for me. I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? Forget curfew, I wasn't even allowed out to begin with. <laughs> there was no curfew. I remember I came home at midnight once and my whole family's there like, we thought you died, what happened to you? And all of this, they're like, mom, I'm 18 and it's midnight. I know, okay. it's so crazy. That was, I, the amount of times I heard my mom say like, I thought you died, I thought you were on the side of the road in a ditch somewhere. It's like, oh my, the draw. Like we live in a suburb, like there's like just strawberry fields around us. Like everything's gonna be okay. There's like a zero crime oh, right here. We're okay. I think I told you this story. My mom, I came home with my sister kind of drunk and it was late and my mom's at the door of the house and she stood there and looked at us and she closed the door, closed the lights and left. So we're on the porch of the house and it's like probably one o'clock or whatever. She did not come back. She didn't come to open the door. She made us sit there on the porch to teach us a lesson. And then my dad finally, maybe around 2.30 came out and said, okay, take your sister upstairs and take care of her. And he gave me a bowl because he knew she was going to throw up. But my <gasps> mom never came back. How old were you guys? Very young. <laughs> Oh my God. I think, I, yeah, very young. I think I was in my first year of university, uh, my, maybe even younger than that. And my, and my mom was not happy with us and she taught us a lesson. She was okay leaving us outside on the porch. You know what's so funny about that though, is that in retrospect, like first year university, like you're already the legal drinking age. Yeah. Like, so it wasn't about like, cause I'm sure your friends were all out and it was yeah. okay. It's yeah. just like the expectation is if you're going to get that drunk, you're living in your own house and I don't see it. Right? Yeah, no, yeah, no. It's my so mom, funny. my God, she taught us a lesson that day and I will never forget it and how I felt after that. So maybe it was a good thing. I don't know, but we're going to see some of those moments I'm assuming in this show. Should we watch this together? Hey gods, it's Devi Vishal Kumar. I'd like to be invited to a party with alcohol and hard drugs. I'm not gonna do them. I just like the opportunity to say- That's so oh. true! <laughs> I was never gonna drink, but I just wanted yeah, to- Yeah, right! Party. Yeah, it's right! So it's so true! <laughs> and lastly, most importantly, I'd really, really like a boyfriend. But not some nerd from one of my AP classes. Like a guy from a sports team. He can be dumb. I don't care. 
And did you notice the geometry book that she put right in front of the gods? She put her textbook on top of it too. That was hilarious. So I think one of the things for me growing up in, and this might've been very different for you because you grew up in Toronto and there's a lot more diversity in Toronto, but in the suburb I grew up in, I was one of the other only people of color. And I definitely was targeted for my race and bullied for my race growing up. And I, it's so funny watching that um, because I do relate to that. I think I was way too scared to ever drink when I was growing up or try marijuana or even like a cigarette. I, was so like, you know, just trained so well by my parents, but I just wanted the invitation to be like around the kids doing it. And I, it's so funny watching that because that just brings back so many memories for me of like wishing I could be part of like the cool kids at school and get invited to some of those like cool parties. Yeah, you know, but I dealt with uh, a lot of racism as well, even being in even Toronto. In, even in, it, really? Yeah, in the big city. And, uh, it was diverse. I think it made people think it was easier to pick on people of color because you were of color. Or it was, there was a lot of, I was called tacky all the time. Uh, the reason but weren't there students, so many other brown people at your school? Actually, no, that, like, no because uh, I was brought up in Toronto, right? So Toronto wasn't full of Indian people. They were up north towards Brampton. Not, that's not even north, that's west. But right. in my, we were brought up in an Italian neighborhood. So all I knew was Italians. We knew Greek. Uh, but in my school, there was mostly um, Europeans, to be honest. So oh, there wasn't a lot of Indian people in Toronto. But if you go on the outskirts, there was. So yeah. I think we were in the same type of uh, situation where um, I was picked on because of my skin color. There, there were certain things that were said to me that were just horrific and Mm-hmm. And it did, it did affect me, but you're right. I was a nerd in school, but I was a cool nerd. I wasn't just nerdy. I was, I was a cool nerd. I feel like the cool nerd thing just started like in 2018. I don't no, think that I cool nerds cool. were, I don't think that that a thing. I had boobs early. So I was a cool kid. <laughs> I was a cool nerd. I, I, I did not, I did boobs. not have boobs till I was like, uh, in my last year in OAC, for those of you who are old enough to remember grade 13 in OAC, right. I got boobs this summer before OAC. Girl, I got mine in grade five. Like, yeah. Now we switch sides, but oh, yeah. Yeah, I was young. <laughs> I, I, was like, I was like, what is happening right now? Uh, but I think I think we can relate to her character in some way or another. But totally. uh, you could feel that you can almost um, feel Mindy Kaling's words through her. You can see that she wrote this. You can feel that. So I'm looking forward to this for sure. And I think it's going to get a lot of people talking. I, I, and what's I, I her want character's my kids to name? Watch it. Her name, her, her Debbie, Debbie or yeah, so cute. She looks she's so, so cute. cute. Although I will say, I feel like for those of us who were like, how old do you think she probably is? Like in this show, 12, 14? She's 15. She's 15. Like, I, okay, maybe 15. I think that, like, between 12 and 14, I still had, like, a unibrow and a mustache. And my hair was way frizzier. Like, she's very pretty for us. That is true. That is very for, true. Like, a middle school brown girl. Like, That's I feel true. like we didn't get cute until high I think school. I started thread- threading at 15. Yeah, I mean, I think I started, I think like, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think I never did my, I, I did, I started doing my, like, my Fu Manchu like when I was like uh I think 15 yeah I think that was the age yeah yeah when the waxing started I oh my god do you remember all that jeez yeah so, so okay. okay I I guess we're looking forward to the show both of us we both give it thumbs up yeah both give it thumbs up I'm very much looking forward to this and I think that Mindy is someone who's like really a a great person to keep your eye on for the South Asian community to keep your eye on in Hollywood because she is one of those people who is wearing many hats. She's not just acting other people's parts and acting other people's scripts that might be written by someone who doesn't look like her or from a writer's room that doesn't have diversity. I mean, she is producing, she's writing, she's directing, she's, you know, she's doing all these things. And I think that really means that the voice is mm. authentic. So I, I mean, I definitely have a lot of respect. You know, I liked her as an actress, but I really like her now that she's using her voice to change Hollywood. And if you follow her on social media, she has the confidence. You can see that she is proud to be Indian. She mm. is willing to share her life in a way that a lot of people would kind of 
shy away from. I mean, I think for me too, I didn't even really celebrate me being South Asian until recently because I didn't know it was a conversation. Uh, when I started in television, I just like had fun and I'm like, let's go for it. But then you mm -hmm. don't realize the impact. I don't know if you felt this way too, that you're having on younger South Asian, that, that this is possible. This journey is possible. You can be on television. And I think it's partly because I didn't see myself when I was younger. So uh, I, now I'm finally realizing the impact we're having. Yeah, agreed. And, you know, I think it's also how things have really changed from 10 years ago, 15 years ago to now. Um, in terms of being vocal and a and a minority being vocal, because when I started, when I got my first on air job in like 2002 or whatever it was, um, I didn't want to bring attention to the fact that I was different because I felt like my whole life I was told I was different, and I right. wanted to be able to fit in and look like I I fit in just like everybody else. I earned it just like everybody else, and that to me in 2002, 2003, 2004 seemed like the best thing to do. I didn't want to be the token brown girl on much music or the token brown girl on a Canadian show right um and you know I'm not going to name names but you're you know there's a lot of Canadian shows where that we grew up watching that if one Asian girl would leave then they would replace her with another Asian girl if one blonde girl would leave they would replace them with the blonde girl like they had to it's like a Barbie dollhouse you know and I yeah. didn't want that um but now I think the conversation and the world has changed and it's I agree with you. I feel like I haven't been so proud and so vocal about being South Asian until very recently because I felt like the global outlook on this has changed. And now we're in a place where we want to draw attention to that. We need to draw attention to that. And that's real. Well, there's enough of us who have made it now that we can, we can, we're not just trying to fit in now. We can like change the narrative mm. and we need to speak up to change that narrative. If that makes yeah. does that make sense to you? It's, it's liberating, isn't it? It is. It is. That's why I was so excited. Like when we came up to, with this idea and we were like, let's do it. Let's, you know, let's spill the tea on all kinds of stuff. And let's call it <laughs> spill the chai. And yeah. like this idea was really exciting to me because even though I've, I've always acknowledged that there's been a, a, a whole generation of young brown women who have, you know, looked up to me or written to me or been, you know, some of my biggest supporters throughout my career. Yeah. Um, I never felt like I was a face for South. Like I just didn't, I think there's so much diversity within the South mm -hmm. Asian community that for me to, to claim that would have been like, I don't think it's right. You know, I, I, I can't, I, I just felt like it was too much responsibility to right. bear. I agree. But yeah. when we started talking about this and talked about how we could talk, how the two of us could like kind of chat about how there is so much diversity and touch on that diversity. Um, this is like, I, I'm in the, definitely in the era of my life where I'm embracing it. And mm -hmm. a lot of that has to, has to do with, this political era that we live yeah. in and not shying away from who you are and speaking up about who you are and what you believe in. And it's so important you say that because when we did start Spill the Chai, I mean, we seen Lily Singh on YouTube. She took over a world mm -hmm. where- Canadian she, girl. Every, yeah, Canadian yeah. girl. And she was so celebrated for bringing her culture to the table and people were embracing it. And that was And it. being bisex we, openly bisexual South Asian on top of that. Right. So for that, even that, that kind of said, okay, you know, there was this niche that we need to have this conversation, but that's all we found was Lily Singh. We didn't see anything else on YouTube that what we're doing right now. So so hopefully this is an outlet for everyone to have a conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because now you have like Lily Singh, you have Priyanka Chopra, you have Mindy Kaling, you have Jamila. I mean, you have all these people that are out there and in Hollywood yeah. and doing great, great things. So, um, yeah. yeah, I do love it. But I will say I do think that, uh, you know, a lot of times in the entertainment industry and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like from a lot of people who are on the production side, I still get pigeonholed as a woman of color and as a South Asian woman that I just want to be on TV, that I'm just supposed to kind of represent this very cute entertainment talking head. And I, that's why I feel so proud of Mindy because she is taking that step also behind the camera. It's so true. It's so true. We're lucky. We're lucky that we're able to take this step forward. And when you have kids, maybe, I don't know, that's a different mm -hmm. whole show. I have never asked you if you actually want kids. Oh my gosh, I've never asked. It's a different show. That's a whole different show, but like that's going to change for my girls, you know, where they don't have to think about that. And that, yeah, it's kind of, it's a great feeling to know that we're able to take that conversation. Look at my nails. Oh my gosh, half of them are cracked. Oh um, yeah, guys, we're still in quarantine when we're shooting this for those of you. I haven't oh, dried my hair in over 14 days, like uh, air dried. <laughs> 
poor, poor Sagita <laughs> hasn't gotten that manicure. So please bear with well, us. I've been biting them off, but we're lucky to be able to be those, that voice and that change for our, the next generation. Yeah. So I'm really glad that we're doing this. And I also feel like, you know, in our own lives too, we've really tried to take um, initiative as, as people in the in the public eye to change that narrative a bit in our own ways right like I mean mm-hmm. I've definitely like tr- I produce I host I write stuff I'm really trying to work in the environmental justice sector I mean the last time we talked about um the D- the new Disney show Mira you were even talking about how you were working on this book for children this children's yeah. book that was really like I mean I think that it is really important for us to be changing the narrative however it is whether it's talking to our kids or on a mm. on a global scale or within a doctor's practice or whatever that we're mm-hmm. changing the narrative in our own you know even hairdressers like changing that narrative within how like hair looks like I think all those different facets of life need to have more voices than just this very predominantly um, Caucasian Eurocentric voice that we grew up with I love that it's it's a great feeling it really is and to be able to be talking to you about three different shows that are based on the South Asian community. Are you kidding me? We're lucky if we get one and we're talking about three of them now. I mean, we don't have all of them, but yeah, you know, the fact but at least that they're out there. Out there. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's great. And we're, we're able to share that with all of you who are watching right now. All of you who are watching, can you bombard, do a brown girl a favor and like bombard Mindy Kaling's Twitter and Instagram and send her links of our show and let's get Mindy Kaling on yeah, Spill the Chai. do it. I just noticed my thumbs go way back. Thumbs up. (laughs) All right. Subscribe below. Leave us your comments on this show. Never have I ever produced by Mindy Kaling. It's on Netflix. It's starting on April 27th. Uh, We're both big fans. We're both looking forward to it because my kids are going to be those kids. And also just support another brown girl who's like doing her thing and let us know what you think. Yeah, we love Mindy. And don't forget. Bombard Mindy and tell her to come and join us on Spill the Chai. Spill the Chai. That's <laughs> for Sangita. Cheers. You and your weird cups, man.